Hello again, my name is Ben Canning, and this micro lecture is on series and parallel circuits. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. So a little bit of review first. Uh, we talked about before this idea, if you have two resistors in a row like this, that the bigger resistor causes a bigger voltage drop. That's because voltage is essentially energy, and so if it's a bigger resistor, it's harder to get through and requires more energy to go through. Uh, as a result, this gets a smaller voltage drop, this gets a bigger, but we notice that in total it adds up to the total amount of voltage. We also talked about the idea that since there's only one path through, that means that every single charge that comes out of this battery has to go through this resistor and then this resistor, meaning that the current through each resistor is going to be the same, because there's no other place for it to go. It'd be like if everyone was in a single file line in a narrow hallway where they have nowhere else to go, you know that if somebody enters that hallway, eventually they're going to have to exit that hallway because um, there's really just nowhere else to go. This is in fact called a series circuit, uh, or these resistors are said to be in series, is a more accurate way of saying that. So series just means one after another. In this case, we have one resistor after another, and so this is uh, an example of two resistors in series. Now, as we've talked about before, resistors in series get the same amounts of current, and each get a piece of the total voltage drop. So if the total voltage drop across them all is 12, then one of them will get, I don't know, three in this case, and one will get nine. Or if it was a different amount of resistance, one would get a little bit more, one would get a little bit less, or if they're equal resistances, they would both get an equal voltage drop, or six volts in that case. To calculate the equivalent resistance, or think of it as the combined resistance of this and this, uh, what we do for series circuit is we just add them up. So if there are two resistors, like there are in this case, we would have resistor 1, its value, plus resistor 2. So in our example back here, that would be 2 plus 6, or 8 ohms would be the total or equivalent resistance, uh, the combined resistance of those two resistors. All right, let's look at, uh, in this case, the uh, where we have two paths, uh, one path uh, going above, one going below, or two different resistors. A little bit of review. When we have this case, we know that the current splits, meaning the if the, we have six amps of current going in, then up here we'll get four, and here we'll get two, where more current goes through the path of least resistance, and less current will go through the other path. Smaller resistor, less resistance, means more current. Notice, though, that the total is 6 between these two. We also talked about the idea that both of them are going to get a 12 volt voltage drop. Since as each charge goes through this circuit, it doesn't have any opportunity to go anywhere else except to through at least one of these resistors, then that means as it goes through that one resistor, it has to get rid of or um, lose all of its energy by the time it gets back to here. Um, the assumption we're making in this is that the wires don't have any resistance and don't cause any voltage drop or energy drop. Um, they're free to go through or something along those lines. So ultimately what that means is both of them get the total amount uh, of voltage um, from this circuit. Well, this is in fact called a parallel um, circuit, or more accurately I should just say these two resistors are in parallel. Um, as we've seen before, that means they get the same voltage, or the total voltage in this case, and they each receive a piece of the total current flow. So the current flow adds together, um, and then as they combine back again, the total current will be over here. Now, equivalent resistance is a little bit funkier. Um, one way to think about this is to think about, since each of these is its own separate circuit, each of them will allow a certain amount of current through on its own. So since you have two paths, more current would go through. I often like to think of this as if you're waiting in line to, let's say, get into, um, I don't know, a club or something along those lines, then if you have two doors instead of just one door, then it's going to go a whole lot faster, meaning more people are going to be able to enter much quicker. Same thing goes for parallel circuits. You might think it would increase resistance, but it actually becomes easier when you open up more pathways. Even if one pathway is like a stricter bouncer and he doesn't let as many people through as quickly, it's still more people than it would be if you only had the one door or one pathway. 
Similarly, there's more places for electricity to go, so more electricity is going to go through. That means that together, these act like a smaller resistance, or there's less um, resistance to electricity through this entire circuit because there are multiple pathways. For that reason, we come out to this sort of equation. You have 1 over the equivalent resistance equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus however many resistors there are. Um, so in this case, one thing to be careful with is after you find the common denominator and add these two or three or however many things together, you come up with a fraction and you have to take the reciprocal or the inverse of that. Otherwise, uh, you're left with one over the equivalent resistance. And what we want is just the equivalent resistance in this case. All right, so to recap. We have some examples of series circuits here, uh, or things in series. So we've got two light bulbs in series, and here two light bulbs in series. And then an example of parallel, where there are two separate paths, uh, one path through here, and then one path goes all the way down here and is in through here. Similarly, uh, we can represent that with these schematic diagrams. For voltage, when we have things in series, the total voltage is equal to the voltage drop over the two things combined. Um, when we have things in parallel, the each one gets the total voltage, so all of those are equal. Current, though, in series, since there's only one path on the way through, each of them gets the same amount of current. In parallel, well, since there are two paths, then that means that the sum of the currents through each of those guys will equal the total, but they're each going to get only a chunk. And last but not least, um, equivalent resistance can be calculated like this. We can even do that for light bulbs if we can figure out how much resistance each one has on its own. Um, very easy to do that. There are devices that will do that for us. Uh, so that's a recap of series versus parallel, and that's it for this micro lecture. Uh, three or more bullet points, one to two sentence summary, and do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.